What's up bosses, this is JoeMan543 and today I'm going to take you through how I make videos. Not the hardware, this is going to be more of software and the processes I use, the decisions I make. Really this is what makes me more than just a computer and a microphone. Perhaps you're watching this video just because you're curious or perhaps you're looking to get going with your own YouTube. I hope it's helpful in either case and, and leave comments below if there was a part that stuck out to you as especially helpful or interesting. Let's jump into it. <clears throat> Great. Now I have Audacity recording audio, but I need to sync it up with the camera because I have those two medias that I need together. Clapping is normally a very good way of doing that because the camera has a microphone and this has a microphone so I can visually see the two audios and I can put them on top of each other and then I can listen to it and make sure it's all good. Next I need to get my screen recording going. I myself use Fraps for my screen recording. If you have something that works better for you, great, fantastic. It doesn't really matter what you use honestly as long as you can get a video out of it and it's not too much of a hassle. So use what you use, you know? If it works, it works. I also record my voice separate from the game. That way I can balance the levels and we'll get into that later, but sometimes I need to control them separately. Fraps does have an option to record the microphone with the game, but I've chosen to do separately so I have that control. Great, so now I have Fraps ready to go, not recording yet, and Audacity still recording. The final thing I need to do is have my Fraps folder open, and you're probably not going to really see this because I am probably in the way but I like to have it off to the side there so I can see that I'm recording, that the files aren't having trouble, stuff like that. So now that I have these things on my screen and going, the next thing to do is pull my game up. Now I've been working on Halo 2 in the Master Chief Collection, so I'll start by pulling up the Master Chief Collection and then it's going to tell me that it doesn't like fraps, but that's okay. There it is. It's okay. We can use fraps. Okay, so once I am in the game here, now I can start my screen recording. And yes, it is early. I will cut off the beginning of it, but this is where I sync everything together. Remember how I talked about clapping earlier? Well, how am I supposed to clap in game? I can't. What I can do is go up and down on the menu and say things as I go. One, two, three. One, two, three. Alternatively, I can turn my volume way up. And by doing that, now the game music has gone into this microphone, which I have over here. So again, I can visually see those in my editing program. Also, I can just listen to it and if there's an echo, I know that it's not in sync. But if there's no echo, I know they're laid on each other perfectly and in sync. So now that we have all the syncing taken care of, this is recording, this is recording, that's recording, now we can hop into our game here. Halo 2. <clears throat> and I'm going to resume. Now some games are different. Sometimes I'll do my intro before hopping in, and sometimes I will do my intro after I'm already into the level. In this case, it will start with the cutscene, and then I will do my intro as the level begins and I can move around. Different games work differently for that sort of stuff. I've decided that's what works best in this case. These loading screens can take forever sometimes, so uh, yeah, I'm just gonna check Facebook. There we go. So then after some waiting, I'm actually going to restart the level and then record the cutscene. And it doesn't matter if I talk during the cutscene because the microphone is separate from the game. So whatever. You will die. What? You will die. What's up, bosses? This is Joe Man Five Four. Thanks everyone for watching, and I'll see you next time when we at least confront the heretic leader. We'll see what we do with him. Bye-bye.
And at this point, now that I've finished the level with all that recording stuff, I stop my screen recording, and then I press the Windows key because I don't want to close the whole thing to stop this. And then I would normally stop my voice recording right then, um, but I'm using my voice recording, so what I'm going to do is stop it, save the voice recording, and then while that's saving, close Master Chief Collection. Because Master Chief Collection takes an annoyingly long time to close for some reason. Okay, so once I finish recording, the next step is to edit that recording. I, myself, use Adobe Premiere Pro CS6, but really anything that can cut, move, and uh, let you handle video clips down to the frame is pretty much good enough. It's very rare you'd probably go above that for these types of videos I make, but you know, you might need stuff. Anyway, so to start with, I take my screen recordings I have, and then I pull them into Adobe right here, put them on my timeline here, which I already have set to the same as the screen recording settings. And then I also need to grab my voice recording, bring that in here. And then I gotta wait a few minutes while it conforms all these and basically figures out how to use all the, all the stuff I have here. Okay, I finally have my video clips all ready to go as far as audio goes. So I just drop my voice in here. And the next thing I need to do is sync it up. One, two, three. What? Go. One, two, three. Things as I go. One. One, two, three. One, two, three. Okay, now that I have this more or less synced, what I can do now is jump ahead to where the video is going to start. There's always the loading screens and stuff. It's easier to sync before all that happens. All right, so here, the level just starts, but I need to restart it so I can get the cutscene from the beginning of it. All right. There it is. <clears throat> and then, for the final thing, I'll just take my voice and scoot it along until the cutscene's over. You may wonder, why would I do that? Well, because I don't sync later in the video, so they're still synced. I'm just kind of removing it from there. Now for the fun part. What I gotta do is watch the cutscene and try to get creative with it. When I do this, I normally don't pull resources from other cutscenes or other games. So Joe Man, why don't you pull stuff from other cutscenes? Why don't you make the cutscenes even better. Well, because I already spent hours editing the cutscenes alone. With YouTube, there's a balance of putting content out, but having the content be good. I could put something out every day, but it'd just be a pile of trash. I'd have lots of trash, but it'd be trash. On the other hand, I could put something out once a month, and it would be maybe pretty good. Maybe, I don't know. Or maybe I'd peak somewhere before then and it wouldn't really get any better with more work. My point is, there's always a balance. And I found my balance is about three or four videos a week, which I spend a few hours editing and then I put it out. And you guys seem to like it. So that's what I do here. I take what's in the cutscene, uh, for the most part, and I mix it around and I see what I can do. Now a very important thing to do here is take this and unlink the audio from it. That way, I can move the audio independent of the video. Sometimes it's hard to figure out exactly where to start a cutscene. I think I have an idea. For, man, I got five minutes of cutscene to edit. This is gonna take like four hours. Okay, I'm gonna do a simple audio swap here. So I have two words here. Heft, baggage, and this is just bag, right? So I'm gonna pull that out, pull that out. 
I pop this in here, put that over, and then do that. Just simply swapping two words, but I can see visually more or less where they are. Now I gotta listen to it and see how close I was. I might need to adjust a little bit here. How much further must we lag this pieftage? It could be a little bit smoother here. We lag this pieftage. So there's another little trick I like. Now, if I do Control Shift D, then it'll do this little uh, thing to ease it in to that. Must we lag this pieftage? Okay, so that sounds still a little weird, but not as not as uh, the words aren't cutting off quite as bad as before. Further must we lag this pieftage. Alright, so now I've effectively swapped his words around. It's a very simple example, but that's more or less what I do in here. I grab words out of it, swap them with other things, maybe I make them say the word five times, I don't know. But uh, that's more or less what I do. Now, I'm going to stop recording so I can really focus here, and I'm going to jump ahead to once I've already done basically all the cutscene editing, and I'm going to show you the little bits that go into it. And then you'll understand why this five minutes is going to take like four-ish hours of editing. Catch you on the flip side of the editing. Okay, so at this point I have edited the opening cutscene for the video, which is most of the editing I'm going to have to do to the video. Uh, yeah, it took about four or five hours to do it. So, to make this three and a half minute bit that I've made here. I took the original cutscene, which was uh, closer to four minutes. And as you can see here, there was lots of cutting and moving that went on here. I'll just uh, show you a little bit here to give you an idea of that. All right, so in the final video, you will see what this is in entirety. Uh, to show it here, I feel it would be a little redundant. But for sharing the editing part of it, what is my process? Well, I took the cutscene, and some parts I only change up a little bit. This little beginning part here, I mostly just swapped a few words around, nothing big. But then later, basically, once the Arbiter to be has been delivered, I decided, let's make him the Become Arbiter the right Arbiter. away. I am already the Arbiter. Quite so. so, as you can see, we're really jumping ahead, because normally it's like a three minute conversation later, he decides to be the Arbiter. He also never says that voice line exactly. I just combined uh, a couple of them to make him say that. And then finally, I did just a little bit of this uh, smoothing here. This, um, it's like a transition for audio, audio transition. Wow, imagine that. Yeah, that's what it is, and that's what I put on there. And that's why it seems so smooth. I am already the arbiter. Quite. If you listen closely, sometimes you can tell, but Honestly, sometimes speaking is just that way, so I don't think it's a reliable method. But not all areas were easy. What? You will die. There are some areas where I don't know quite what to do, so I'll swap it around, but this area I feel like I was actually going with something. So Arbiter, you know, he just hops right into that Arbiter role, and then... Suicidal! You will die! What? You will die! <laughs> yep, so he's like, Arbiter, you will die. What? <laughs> so it's like a surprise to him. You know, I think it's funny. Some other people think it's funny. So, then he puts the helmet back, and then they have their conversation about what being the Arbiter means. Except it's not even close. Again, you'll see it when you watch the actual video, so I'm not going to share the video verbatim here. But I'm just showing you all the little cuts and little bits that go into making it. Now, there are also some areas where... I need to have sound. Okay, here's an example of where I had to fill in some empty space. So, the voice line here, and this one, they didn't quite have enough empty space on the ends of it. If I were to, uh, let's say, not have that continuous over, they start saying something else. You, you can just barely see, they start saying something else. You, you can just hear, starting a, a different word. So, I just grabbed this empty space from a different area, and just has a little bit of that background sound, but that helps it. So instead of him cutting off or starting a different word, it sounds more like "What of my knees?" You will die. Just a little smoother in there. Just small details like that are what make this take so long. 
Not to mention coming up with the idea. As far as the technical goes for how to do this, well, this is how you do it. You just cut and move stuff around. There's also a creative side, which can't be taught very well. Um, I guess just watching things and uh, that's what you get. So then after they talk about their armor and all that sort of stuff, we come up on the end here where uh, they deploy their troops. Well, I thought, how can I end this off in something that might be funny? Well, things that are sudden and surprising are usually funny, and people falling is funny. So, everyone deploys, and then... <laughs> there is the Arbiter falling and dying. I grabbed that from much later in the video, from about 10 minutes later. And uh, I thought it fit there. Now, I could have done even more with this cutscene, but I thought, you know, a few hours was enough to spend on a few minutes. So, I'm going to leave it like that, and at this point, now, I reach the beginning of my video. What's up, bosses? So I think that's good enough, and at this point, I reach the beginning of actually being able to play the mission. So, I have a little bit of audio balancing to do. So far, I just left the game volume more or less at the level is recorded at. But if we listen here at the beginning, difficulty, because legendary is just too hard. The game is louder than I'd like it to be compared to me. So what I do, I come later when the game volume is significantly high and my voice is also not quiet at least, so I can compare them. Pushes me back. I guess I'm not supposed to really be out. Right, so you can tell from the background music of the game, it's just too loud. So, I'm going to drag this down. From my experience with the other videos, negative falls is about where I want to be with the game audio. And my audio normally comes up just a couple decibels. So then if we take a look... Oh, oh, that's weird. It you can still hear the game just fine, but I am significantly louder, so I will not be drowned out by the game. Now, there's always decisions of, you know, what do you want to hear? But, in my opinion, you're watching my thing because you came here to listen to me. Hopefully, anyway. Now, one more trick is after you've adjusted one, the way I record it splits it eh, somewhat frequently. So that way, if I deal with any corruption or whatever, it's pretty minimal. So, I copy this one, having had that change to it. I select these ones, right-click, and paste attributes. You see that audio line just went down for all of them. So, I do that for the whole thing. Paste your attributes, they all just went down. So the next part I gotta do is basically watch and cut out the parts that I feel I'm either not talking or are just filler. Um, you know, stuff that might bore you. Which, if it's the whole video, well, I can't really fix that now, can I? What's up, bosses? This is Joeman543. Welcome to Halo 2. Also, I normally skip over the game stuff because everyone's heard it already. They didn't come here for the origin of the game. If they did, well, these cutscenes are really going to mislead them. So, I normally focus on the areas I'm speaking and uh, cut out the areas where I'm not really speaking. Yeah. I know in CC there are some shortcuts I can take with that, but I'm not in CC, so this is how I do it. Hmm. Yep, so I go through the whole thing editing like that. Now I'm going to leave you here while I go through the whole thing similar to I, I left you before, because I need to focus on this, and there's even more to focus on. So I'm going to leave you here while I go through the video and do what I do editing it. It's just going to be more of mostly cutting out where I'm not talking, cutting out filler, and... Um, I'll reconvene with you after I've edited that bit, which is, time-wise, most of the video.
Okay, so now that I have put text in below everything that they're saying, uh, that took quite a while, but now I can finally complete the video. So, I just want to make sure that I'm not getting any extra space on the end here. Drag that in, make sure that's right up on the end there. Otherwise, I would have had like an extra minute of blackness on the end, which is just emptiness, and we'll wind up with a bigger file. Don't need that. Now, I have a preset of MP4, H.264 codec, and MP3 audio. So, I do that at 1080p, 60 frames per second. I just gotta choose where I'm gonna save it to, which it remembers from last time. And now I gotta come up with a catchy name for the video. Okay, now that I have a possibly catchy name for it, I will save that little thing. And then I need to queue this up. I could do export, but then the whole program has to stay open. So, now that I have that ready to go, I will start that up. And this is probably gonna take about as long as the video. Normally a little bit longer, but not quite twice as long. Now while that's going, if I play the video that I have in here, it'll pause that render. However, I can scrub through this without it pausing, and I need to get a few still images for the thumbnail. Whenever I make a thumbnail, it's always from the video that I was just working on. So let's see what I can find in here. I'll grab that frame, and I always save it as thumbnail, the video number, and then underscore one, because I'm probably gonna get like three of these, and I wanna keep it somewhat organized. We'll save that. You know what? I'm going to rule in favor of simplicity on this. So now that I have my one picture, now that I have my one picture, I gotta go find it among my files here. Pretty easy to find here. And then I'll just open that up in Photoshop. Now, I don't wanna use all this. In fact, when you view a thumbnail on YouTube, it's like this small, right? I need to, I need to make this a good size. Now, what is a good size? Well, it needs to be large enough that it can easily be seen on YouTube because sometimes it can be rather small on people's screens. On the other hand, I need to have something that's eye-catching. So if I just did a thumbnail that was this, I don't know. Uh, that might not quite draw people in. Okay. So I'm going to try this size out here. Now I also like to add a little bit of text. Halo 2. I'm gonna give a little space there. There we go. Now one important thing when it comes to making thumbnails, the bottom right side is gonna have a time on it. So I gotta make sure I don't put anything there, otherwise something important might get covered up. Okay, now that I have these in place, I need to add a little background to it. I just do that by uh, selecting it, make a layer underneath, and then put plenty of selected area. Right, and then I need to fill that with something. Yeah, I'll just grab that, that color from the Arbiter uh, thing. All right, it's not quite standing out as much as I might like. Okay, that's better, but I still want more. So then I'll do a stroke. Instead of having a feather to it, the stroke here will be a hard line. There we go. So even from this, I can still easily see the Arbiter and see Halo 2, 4. Pretty easy. Now, when it comes to thumbnails, you have this picture to get the person's attention in about half a second. So it's gotta be something real simple and uh, there is definitely a luck factor when it comes to it, but you know, we try. All right, then I'll save that. I like PNGs, except they usually end up a little bit too big, so I always have to do a JPEG. Now, I can get rid of the underscore because this is just thumbnail four. There's only gonna be one of them, and I can save that. I also need to uh, save my Photoshop here. Could have done that at any point. I 
didn't really put that much into it, so I don't feel bad about doing it later. Great, now we have our thumbnail, and we are still waiting on this. So I gotta wait till that gets to the end, and then uh, we'll come back to it. Looks like I have a little over a half hour left. Okay, so at this point, the video is all done getting put together, so the last step is to upload it. I may zoom in or blur or somehow exclude some stuff here. I hope that is understandable. But we do create, upload video, and then I can simply grab my video here, drag it on over here, and it starts the upload. I can also click that and search through folders, but that's lame. Okay, this does not include any mods. I need to change that. But uh, <clears throat> had that automatically included. All right. I'll, I also like to give a description. Nothing too long, just like three sentences or so. Okay, so once I've done the description, I then like to do the thumbnail, which I've already made at this point, so I can simply drag this right onto that. And it has to be less than two megabytes, which is no problem here. And then after we do those tags, we come down, and I don't really normally do anything else at the bottom here. This is extra restrictions you can apply. All right, so then we turn on monetization and continue on. Then YouTube's like, yo, this video cray cray or is it just pretty chill? I'm like, yo, it's pretty chill, it's cool. They're like, okay, cool, we put some ads on this. And then I could do stuff here. I never do because the video is uploading and uh, by the time it finishes, I'm not really going through this anyway. And then finally, I schedule it. <clears throat> now it's gonna take a few hours to upload and it's about 9.30 at night right now, so I am gonna be asleep by the time this finishes uploading. I will schedule it to come out tomorrow, the 17th, at, uh, what do I wanna do? I will do 9 a.m. I normally try not too early in the morning, but still kind of morning-ish, so most people will uh, have most of the day to get to watching that. You know, it won't be too old by the time they watch it, but uh, anyway, that's the time I like. Pretty consistent. It's not too important what time you do, it's mostly important you stay consistent. And now that we have all that, I schedule it, and then it shows me this. But I don't just want to sit here watching that. I can do that, and then now I cannot close this page, otherwise it'll stop the upload, obviously. But yeah, I can look through other videos and anything I might need to do there. And that is the process of how I make YouTube videos all the way from before I even start recording through uploading. If this, if this has been helpful to you or otherwise interesting, feel free to let me know in the comments down below. Leave a like, leave a subscribe, a bell, all those thingies, because uh, the pro YouTubers, make sure to mention those. All right, I'll see y'all next time. You take care and... Uh, have a nice day.